Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your September 2017 astro update. It's Raina here. So I'm really pumped about September for us. You notice that I said us because I'm also a Sagittarius. And usually I just kind of go along even when I'm doing something for my own sign. But it just looks really good. And I'll tell you why. We start the month, Mercury's still retrograding. And it started out in our 10th house of career in Virgo. And by the time September rolls around, it's in the ninth house. The ninth house is Sagittarius's natural house. And it deals with issues such as higher education, higher knowledge, so anything spiritual, and foreign travel, publishing, things like that. So with Mercury retrograding through there, there may be a revisiting of some issue surrounding one of the or more of the above that I mentioned. But because the Mercury retrograde started in the 10th house, it could be connected to your career. It's not just some idle philosophical speculation that you are going over again. And one possibility could be, let's say, you're in a certain type of job and you're not sure if it's right livelihood. In other words, that's a Buddhist term that the work that we do should be something that benefits humanity, that it's not just a matter of us making that money and doing something that isn't right. And so that's why they call it right livelihood. And of course, we could debate on what exactly is right livelihood and what isn't. We're not all going to agree on that. But in general, you may feel like you're not in alignment with something that you're doing professionally. And it causes you to be more philosophical. For some people, you may even be thinking about relocating to another country. And it could be connected to a job, but you kind of put that out of your mind. So something could be swirling around that area. But this is what I really think is fascinating in terms of the way the transits transpire here. We have Mercury going direct on September 5th in the ninth house. The very next day, Mars goes into your 10th house of career. So to me, this is symbolic for all systems go, you know, everything getting back on track. You may even notice now, if you're listening in August, that your something career-wise may have slowed down somewhat. And in August, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, we have people vacationing and things like that. So you could kind of uh, explain it away that way. But, you know, what about people down under. Everyone who is a Sagittarius may feel that their career kind of takes a, a U-turn or at least it comes a little bit to a standstill for a few weeks. And then it's going to really start rocking and rolling again. I think it's going to be more along the lines of the latter half of September because Mercury doesn't gain full strength, you know, get out of its shadow until about, I think it's about the 20th. I'm not looking at the ephemeris at this moment, but something along those lines. And that's when we have a new moon in <laughs> that house, the, the 10th house of career in Virgo, 27 degrees of Virgo. So it all seems to kind of conspire for things to really pick up career-wise towards the end of the month. And so don't get freaked out if you notice that things are a little bit slow as the month begins. If you're conscious of astrological transits, you can see a lot of times the manifestation of this, and it's quite fascinating. Okay, so we, we got that going on. And then Mercury goes into the 11th house of hopes and wishes on the 29th of the month. So it's hitting all of these sectors in one month, which isn't so bizarre because 
Mercury does transit pretty quickly through each sign. But we have the philosophical sector, we have the career sector, and then at the end of the month, we have hopes and wishes, long ta- long range goals, let's put it that way. And that's kind of fun because it's always fun to dream about the future, dream about what it is that you want to attract into your reality. And that sector is the luckiest house in the Zodiac, the 11th house. So I like transits through the 11th house. Now, the sun, speaking of the 11th house, the sun will go into this sector on September 22nd. So this is obviously the day of the fall equinox in the Northern Hemisphere. And so things are changing anyway when we talk about the seasons, and they tend to change in our lives as well. And so the sun is highlighting the area of what it is that you really, really, really want to do in your life. And that's why I love it so much, because I feel like this is the house we should really focus on when we're looking to become the best version of ourselves and the happiest person we can be, is to honor the 11th house and whatever transits come through there, because that's when we will manifest things that really speak to our heart. You know, you can have talents in a particular area and be proficient at something, but it may not speak to your heart. And I think all of us have certain talents like that. We may be good at cooking. We may be good at remembering facts and therefore being a, a, a good professor or something like that. But when it comes to being able to feel that our passion is being ignited every day, It may not be that thing that we thought we should go into because a career counselor or even when we were younger, we just kind of wandered into it because we had certain talents in that area. You may decide, especially as you get into middle age, that you're just not feeling it anymore if you ever did to begin with. And so just look at what comes up for you during this um, transit of the sun in Libra, because in the next month from the 22nd uh, of September to whenever the sun changes in October, that's a time where you may generate creative ideas of what you really want to do and stuff like that. Oh, you know, I really didn't talk about what Mars in the 10th house means. So when Mars goes into the 10th house, you're going to be like chomping at the bit to just catapult yourself to the next level, whatever that means for you in your career. If you're looking for a particular job, you're going to be very driven to find it. If you are in a career, you're going to be very competitive, you're going to be very motivated to do something and that pretty much ensures success when somebody has that. Just make sure that you're not being too aggressive because this can affect your dealings with higher ups and you may find yourself in some kind of a clash, a power clash, if you're not careful that is. So on the 6th of the month, the very next day, there's going to be a full moon in the 4th house of home and family in the sign of Pisces. And Sagittarians have had a long-term transit of Pisces in of Neptune and Pisces in this sector. And this is this creates a sense of some kind of confusion about where you live or matters, property matters, things of that nature, family matters, matters with mother. There could be kind of convoluted situations going on. But this is very interesting because Mercury is actually retrograding at this time. And Mercury goes, (laughs) why did I say Mercury? I meant Neptune. Neptune is retrograding. Um, 
in Pisces in this fourth house of home and family. And it will go direct on November 22nd. This is a very interesting effect when Neptune is retrograding. It kind of pulls back the curtain of that confusion. You actually gain clarity when Neptune is retrograding. You know, it's it's so funny because Neptune rules Pisces and the symbol of the fish are two the symbol of Pisces are two fish in swimming in opposite directions. So there's nothing really practical or logical about Neptune or Pisces. And and that that's not that's not a um anything against against Pisces. It's just showing what type of planetary influence Neptune is. It's spiritual. It's not practical. So when Neptune goes retrograde, it's actually doing kind of the opposite, where it's kind of showing us where the illusion lies. And so this may have, this has been going on for several months now. So you may have had some situations regarding where you live and you realize, wow, um, I didn't, re- I didn't know this, or I never, it never occurred to me that this is what has really been going on all along. I was kind of living in this dream world. And this can also relate to your family of origin. So if you've had any epiphanies, for lack of a better word about, um, that's actually a good word, because that's kind of talking about things from your past that may, maybe your childhood, that you glossed over or you saw in a different light for whatever reason. And then you think, wow, okay. And so Neptune is kind of revealing itself. And then with this Pisces full moon, what is happening is that secrets could get revealed. And this could deal with, you know, where you live. You could, you could be selling a house Sometimes this can be endings or culminations, tying up these loose threads. There may be, you may say, that's it, I'm out of here. That might be the final straw in September. Or you could have a situation where there is some kind of um, secret revealed about your mother or maybe just the family in general that you'd never knew. And so that's that's kind of like a more personal full moon experience. It's it's very internalized. Venus is going into the 10th house on the 19th of September. So this is right before that new moon in the 10th house. I think this is a really good month for Sagittarians when it comes to career. But what is so nice about that is because Mercury um, went retrograde, stationed retrograde in this house, um, there may have been a slowdown in August. And now it's like gangbusters. So if you're listening before the the 5th of September to this report, have no fear. It's, you know, this too shall pass if you notice any kind of a slowdown. And this could also apply if you're looking for work too. Everything gets settled out towards the end of the month and then you have these wonderful transits. Venus in the 10th can bring more money. Uh, It can bring more a sense of charm to you. And that charm can lead you to get hired, can lead you to get promoted, can lead you to get an increase in your income. If you work for yourself, this can help you make a better name, you know, make more of a name for yourself, become more popular. Venus is about popularity, people liking you, really, really liking you, to quote Sally Field. Okay, or paraphrase it. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say is, well, you know, as I said, there's a new moon in the the career sector. So new beginnings with career matters. And then, um, Jupiter is spending the last full month 
in the 11th house of hopes and wishes. So I had just spoken about that earlier, about what that house entails. And Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion in the luckiest house. So suffice it to say that this can be really uh, fortunate for Sagittarius. And I would even say when Jupiter is in its latter degrees, that perhaps it's storing its best surprises for the end, because it will be going into the 12th house around October 11th when it switches signs into Scorpio. So that will be more of a quiet influence. And this can be more, actually more boisterous and social because the 11th house deals with friendships, group associations, you may have expanded your network of friends or, you know, the third house is thought of as the internet, but the 11th house is as well. So you may have made a lot more leeway or headway is probably that was not leeway headway headway into your um associations even on the electronic level in the past 12 months and that can be very good for future career prospects your own your own jobs that you're doing all in all i'm really psyched about september for sagittarius because I think that you're going to be enjoying what you're doing for a living. And also you have your eyes on the future for those long range plans. And you may even find that they come to fruition. I would say, especially when Venus goes into that sector in the next, probably sometime I'm assuming in October. So that could bring money to be able to make your dreams come true and things like that. And then we have a new moon in that sector as well. In it, Actually, it's uh, October 19th to be exact, and that's exactly one month from when Venus goes into the 10th house. So I li I'd like to think that that's connected in some way. But anyway, Sag, I'm going to leave it there. I wish you all the best in September. If you'd like a private reading, I and promoting my natal chart interpretations. They're on sale, and I have other types of readings as well. Have a great month. Bye.